We are heading into the late summer months, and this is usually the time of the year when we start seeing wildfire smoke out west or in Canada. It's also the time of year when we see Saharan dust making its way across the Atlantic. And in the satellite imagery, we see both of those things. Here's the start of that Saharan dust back on the 13th. We take it forward 14th, 15th, and 16th. We see it crossing the Atlantic, bringing it up to the current date, located right there around Puerto Rico eastward. That'll make it into Florida by this weekend. And there's a look at the smoke problems in Alberta, Saskatchewan, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. Quite a bit of smoke all the way from Baker Lake down to Edmonton and over to around Saskatoon. The current forecast trajectories do bring that smoke into the U.S. around the Great Lakes region, the Midwest, and the northeastern U.S. So this will be probably sometime next week. Looking at the surface analysis for this Friday afternoon, this is much different from the kind of weather we saw last year we had that scorching heat down in the southern U.S., temperatures approaching 110. Well, it's a different story. Temperatures in the upper 80s and lower 90s, and that's due to this cool polar high sinking south out of Canada and temperatures in that region in the 70s and 80s. However, this time of year when we get those fronts coming southeastward, we have a lot of convective activity due to the, due to the presence of numerous boundaries not only the front itself, but also the convective boundaries pushing outwards from these storms over the span of one, two, three days. They're very persistent and they regenerate more convective activity, such as what we see in the southeastern U.S. this afternoon. There's what we have on the visible satellite imagery, a mix of convective debris as well as new convection. That extends all the way from the Everglades, Lake Okeechobee, all the way up to Georgia, where we have numerous storms in progress. If we look at the radar, this shows the extent of that precipitation all the way from the Carolinas down into Mississippi and Louisiana. The tail end of the front through Texas, producing some storms around the San Antonio area, but up to the north, dry advection, a more stable air mass in place across Dallas, Little Rock, and Memphis. The northeastern U.S., under the influence of that high-pressure area from Canada, not much vertical development on this cloud field. You can see over the Great Lakes, pretty much clear, as well as downstream from the lakes. In the north-central U.S., thunderstorms in South Dakota and Nebraska we do have an enhanced risk from the Storm Prediction Center looking for a possibility of strong winds, a low-end risk for hail. A severe watch has been issued for that same area ahead of this complex developing in south-central Nebraska into the Goodland area. Let's take a look at the radar. There we have storms from Arapahoe to around McCook down to Goodland, and we can see that outflow boundary right there. So they are outflow-driven. And we're expecting those to coalesce into clusters, possibly evolving into a mesoscale convective system this evening, and then weakening as they head further to the southeast. In the southwestern U.S., an active monsoon pattern continues, mostly in the mountains at this time, all the way back to Nevada and the Mokion Rim, also in the parts of southeastern Arizona. In the lower deserts, we have excessive heat warnings. Those are back. The usual culprits, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Yuma, Palm Springs, temperatures to 110 to 115. Today, we're looking for 114 at Phoenix and 112 for Las Vegas. And then those expand to California for next week. Excessive heat warnings through Wednesday. Palmdale, Lancaster, the San Fernando Valley, and up the San Joaquin Valley all the way to Merced. Temperatures will be reaching 109 to 113. You can see we've already got wildfire problems. Let's take a closer look at that. That's going to be around Bakersfield. There it is. This is the Trout Wildfire, about 10,000 acres burning, and the smoke is being carried up to Visalia and Hanford. 
in the northwestern U.S., clear skies, and we do have excessive heat warnings all the way from the Cascades to the Rockies. We're going to look at that shortly. In the Pacific region, we do see the North Pacific High remains on the weak side. In fact, stormy conditions in the Gulf of Alaska. Heading further up north, the air mass recovering some in Alaska, warming up into the 60s. And then as we head towards the east, a very powerful weather system going through the Canadian High Arctic. We have rainfall warnings for Resolute and Grace Fjord in the High Arctic, looking for up to one inch at those towns. Those will be causing problems with mud and washouts. Heat warnings further south, that's the big story in Canada. Basically everywhere from Manitoba to Saskatchewan, Alberta, the interior of British Columbia, this entire region looking for temperatures anywhere from 84 to 97 degrees and extending into the Northwest Territories as well. It is cool this afternoon, but temperatures will be going up over the weekend. No problems in eastern Canada. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s there and catching that drier westerly flow. Let's take a look at the mid-tropospheric chart, 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet. This shows geopotential heights and wind. We see a subtropical high across Arizona and Utah, one lobe of it extending into Alberta and Saskatchewan. All of this associated with that hot weather. A strong Hudson Bay vortex located right there with northerly flow coming into the north central U.S. and the Great Lakes region. Also, stormy conditions in the Gulf of Alaska, deep 556 decameter low, located about 500 miles south of Anchorage. Let's take a look at the weather over the weekend into next week. We see that subtropical high moving to the west, taking aim on California. And as we mentioned back on Wednesday, that's going to open up this northeasterly flow into Arizona. So as those rains pick up in places like Phoenix and Tucson, we should see an increase in the possibility of severe weather as strong organized cells come off the Mokion Rim and push that activity southward. We see this strong Gulf of Alaska low moving inland across British Columbia, so some rather stormy conditions in the Pacific Northwest down towards Washington that'll break up that period of hot weather, which we're going to discuss shortly. Elsewhere around the country, unsettled conditions with this vague area of troughing across the Corn Belt down into the south central U.S. And as we go into next weekend, still have that anticyclone located right there. That's going to be across Arizona and Utah. So very stagnant weather pattern across the southwestern deserts. And as we go into next weekend, this subtropical high starts building westward. So probably that's going to shut down this stormy weather pattern across the south central U.S. and replace it with warmer conditions. Looking at the tropics, I'm, I'm not even going to show you the NHC graphics because they are completely clear of storm activity. We can see a combination of a highly sheared environment across the Caribbean and southern North Atlantic, and quite a bit of dry air along with that as that Saharan layer pushes westward. We take that all the way through late next week and into the weekend. Another blob of dry air moving across Dominica and Haiti. The atmosphere continues to be highly sheared, and we start getting a little bit of a favorable environment out there in the Cape Verde region as we get towards the following week, and that might open up some potential. And I do plan to extend the charts out further to the east. Haven't done that yet, but at least this will give you some idea of what's happening. Yeah, that's quite a bit of shear. So it's going to be hard to get anything going in the Caribbean or the Gulf. Nevertheless, there will be some easterly waves working through the flow. There goes one into the Caribbean on Sunday. Then we go into midweek and there's another what looks like another easterly wave moving through on Thursday and uh, another one on Friday. A little bit of enhancement of the wind flow, but all of that heads into Central America. Maybe some of that moisture rounding that anticyclone into Texas. That might keep those precipitable water values elevated through 
next week and into the following weekend. But you can see we're pretty much clear of any tropical storms or disturbances. So we might as well push on and look at those surface charts. There's our polar front starting to weaken across the Carolinas into Alabama, into South Texas. Most of the precip concentrated along that front. We have upslope flow and some moisture there on the high plains producing storms and showers as well. As we mentioned, that area is under enhanced risk. Going into tonight, the remains of that complex moving into central Kansas and eastern Nebraska, and not much of it left by tomorrow morning. Then we recharge for tomorrow afternoon. Some remnants in Iowa and Kansas City. We are looking at a marginal risk in northeastern New Mexico right in here around Raton, Clayton, Las Vegas, Tucumcari. High winds possible due to inverted V soundings and a moderately sheared environment. Also an SPC marginal risk along this frontal boundary in eastern North Carolina. High winds will be the main factor there as well. And as far as the temperatures, we're, we're really cranking up that heat there on Saturday. That's going to be the hottest day of the forecast period. Phoenix expecting to get up to 116 with 105 at Tucson. Rain problems continue in New Mexico. The monsoon will concentrate in that area. The Weather Prediction Center has already called for a slight risk of excessive rainfall Saturday and Sunday across a large swath of central New Mexico into Alamosa and into Monday in northern New Mexico. Five-day totals in New Mexico looking to be about one to three inches most places with over four inches in the mountains. So be on the lookout for canyon flash flooding if you're going to be out and about in the southern Rockies. Also looking for enhanced rain on the Mogollon Rim Saturday, some areas seeing about one inch. We go into Saturday night and Sunday. There's how we're looking early in the afternoon. Still got that front from Atlanta to Dallas. No severe risks expected anywhere. That Saharan dust will be moving into Florida, so rather hazy in that part of the country. The heat continues in the southwestern deserts. Looking for 114 at Las Vegas, so this will be the hottest day for them during the forecast period. Also the hottest day in the Pacific Northwest. You can see some thermal troughing right there. As another lobe of subtropical high rotates anticyclonically through that area, we're looking for 111 at Lewiston, 109 at Pasco, and 107 at Boise and Spokane. Wildfires will be a problem through that area, including in eastern Oregon. We could see a lot of wildfire smoke generated and carried eastward into the high plains early next week. Rain is expected across north Texas into central Texas Sunday night and into Monday, about an inch in most places. There it is forming another convective complex in the panhandles in northeastern New Mexico and continuing through the night. For Monday, we're still looking at a frontal boundary through Texas and Arkansas. Chances for rain continue to increase in parts of central Texas, north Texas, as those boundaries shift to the south. Saharan dust remains a factor across much of the southeastern U.S., mostly creating hazy conditions in that part of the country. And chances for storms start to increase in eastern California after a decrease over the weekend. Could see lots of storms and rain across eastern California by Tuesday and Wednesday. And we take it on into Tuesday, and I'm trying to keep this from getting all long-winded. But uh, here's what we got for Tuesday. Looking for storms again in Texas, across a wide area, East Texas, down into South Central Texas. This will be the hottest day of the forecast period in the San Joaquin Valley. Looking for 105 at Sacramento, 110 at Fresno. Temperatures dropping significantly in the Seattle, Portland area, and in the Cascades as well. Overnight lows could be near freezing up in the mountains. Chances for rain go up tremendously in the northeastern U.S., especially the Appalachians and into the coastal regions by Tuesday night. And we'll just take you through the remainder of the week. Looks pretty rainy across much of the south and into Texas. And at the very end of the period for, what is that going to be, Monday? Yeah, another Front coming down through the Great Lakes area. Maybe this one will be stalling out in the central plains 
and elsewhere around the country looks stagnant continuation of the monsoon pattern in the southwestern U.S. And that's about it. So let's uh, go ahead and close it up and get this uploaded. Okay, that'll be it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thanks to our new supporters, Brooks, Tristan, Rogo, and also to Alec. Thank you for supporting the program. And I will be on break next week. Definitely need to recharge and regroup and come at things kind of fresh. So we'll be back just after that around the uh, 28th, I think. 29th. We'll be back on that Monday for the supporters and on the 31st Wednesday for everybody else. So hope you have a great weekend and a great next week and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.